In today's video, we are going to discuss about SharePoint Online Highlighter Content Web Part. This is one of the very important web part that we are going to uh, discuss in this particular video. And we will discuss what this uh, web part is, why we are using it, how we can configure and use it, how we can select content from various sources, as well as I will show you how we can do filter and search. And then finally, I'm going to explain you one very important things that how we can enable audience targeting for this particular web part. Now, that is little different from the previous web part, which is uh, the quick links web part that I have shown it, but that one is little different from here. Now, if you are familiar with content search and content query web part, then definitely you are going to love this web part because this is somehow we are using that web part uh, alternative to that web part to display various documents based on conditions like this. So uh, without further delay, what I'll do is I will create a web part page. So you can see here, I will go here, click on new and let's not go from here. He will go from here and then you have the simple option that you can click on PS page and then you can say uh, create page and I will give the example as uh, it is highlighted content web part. So that is what we are uh, going to see here. Uh, okay, if you are new to the channel, then I am BJ and I am a Microsoft MVP in SharePoint. And I have a lot of experience on working with SharePoint. And uh, you can subscribe to the, to the channel if you are new so that you will get a lot of free videos on Microsoft tech, uh, 365 technologies. Now, what I'll do here is you can simply publish the web part uh, page or the site page, sorry. And then uh, this is what is the page is all about. Now, edit the page and then we will go here and add a web part. So for that, I'll click over here and then you search for highlighted content. You will see uh, this is the web part and by default, this is displaying eight items from the entire site. These are most recent documents. Now, uh, okay, I will show you. I have two libraries on this uh, where documents are there mainly. So you can see here documents library and the an another one is training documents, which is where I have a couple of documents as well. Now. Uh, let's edit this web part you can see here the moment i edit it we have two options first of all to narrow down the searches one is on filter another one is the uh, query so custom query where you can use camel or kql code so if you are not familiar with camel code then i'll put this link in the video description where you can see the camel query stuff on this so you, this is how we can use it so i'll put a a uh, link to this article as well as a video tutorial as well so that you can go through it and then you will get to know uh, about how we can use camel query or how we can write camel query and uh, you can also use that uh, camel query builder to generate query for the sharepoint online sites so for this particular example i will choose filter option and then you can see here content and here here you have various options one is site uh, you can display uh, from the site collection from uh, the page library uh, also you can display from all the sites so imagine you want to display recent documents from all the sites you can choose this option and once you choose this option you can see things has been changed and if you want to uh, there is an option where also you can select sites suppose i want to display items from the internal site and from the uh maybe this rena technologies you can see so you will be able to see uh documents from these two sites so for this particular example what we will do here is i want to display documents from a particular document so from a particular document library so in this case i will choose this option a document library on this site you can see here uh, by default when you will uh, choose this you will see documents from uh, different sites uh, uh, sorry from uh, a library so in this case the default library you can see documents is selected that's the reason you will be able to see the documents i can choose here other documents so if you'll see here i have training documents and it is now showing me or displaying me these four items and also i can change the document type suppose you want to display only the word document you can choose this word document and you can see here that has been changed i do not able to see the ppt or the pdf i can see only the document word documents 
and then you can you have the option also where you can uh, change it like you can also add more document types if you want to see then the filter you can see here there you can have lot of filters on this you can have include uh, title include created by recently added it, modified all these things you can choose it from that particular uh, uh, filter option even you can if you'll go to created by you will be able to see here you can choose uh, a particular user like current user or you you be you can display users uh, or any particular user if you want to provide then you can select a user and a, add a user so that you will be able to only uh, documents uploaded by or created by from this particular user you can add that option as well so uh, these are a few options you can see i have i will just select recently added you can see here once you uh, do that you will be able to see uh, options like today yesterday that kind of also you will be able to see you can able to filter documents based on that so there are a lot more filter options are available on this then sort by you can see here most recent by author name title you can if you will do title you can see here this is how you will be able to sort this uh, item so um this is how you can do filter and search or sort by things as well so a lot of features are available which you can try it out as well and before going to enabling audience targeting let me just show you the layouts so there are few layouts are there uh, grid layout list layout carousel you can see here you can see the compact layout you can see the film strip layout so it will select compact layout you can see here this is how it is appearing and the last one you can see here the properties box it is saying how many items you can show eight items by default you can i think you can select at one time you will be able to get uh, 200 items and you can enable this option if you do not want uh, this web part to be shown if there is nothing no items are available you can simply check this item so if your filter criteria doesn't satisfy any item so then it will not show this web part at all so this is how we can uh, see these options now let's move to the, the one of the most important thing here is audience targeting how we can set it now if we we'll look at here uh, the option is uh, you can see here i'll enable it once you enable it i'll publish it nothing will nothing is going to happen here uh, like it will not allow you to individually edit item and set any group or something like that that means if i will now uh, go to the any other user for example i will go to uh, another i mean same site with a, another user i have logged in you can see here i have logged in with user 2 you can see and uh, they can see all the items as well so uh, nothing is working as of so what you have to do on these cases you have to enable audience targeting for that uh, particular uh, um, you know particular library uh, so before that i wanted to show you one more thing as well so i'll edit it i will just disable this uh, audience targeting and i will republish this page you can see here now what i will do here is this is my library i'll go to the library settings i'll go here library settings more library settings and then you can see here audience targeting so once you have this option you will see here enable audience targeting don't go to the classic one you can choose the first option enable audience targeting click on ok so once you enable audience targeting you will go to the library you will see one column has been added so you can actually edit items and you can put the value like any group you have to provide it so if i'll just quickly show you i have two groups on this so i will just open my outlook it will scroll down then uh, you will see the groups here you can see my audience group is one and my new audience group is there so in the new audience group you can see here uh, these three users are there but not the user two so we will basically use my new audience group now i will go here and uh, sorry i'll go to the library and then i'll edit the items what i'll do here is i will put here like it will the moment you will start start typing it will come my new audience group and this one also i wanted to do this one my new audience group so i will then i will exit grid view so now you will see here we have uh, set the target for these two items that means now when user will open that uh, documents the user two they should not be able to see this because that user is not a part of this new audience uh, group 
so now i'll go to this and if you'll see here we have not yet enabled this we just uh, set the audience targeting in the library level if i will go to this uh, page again as logged in as user 2 you can see here user 2 still able to see all the items because we have not enabled that option so what i'm doing now here is you can see this is my logged in so i will edit this page and we will now i'll go to the edit option i will enable here so i just enable it i have not done anything so you can see here uh, this i'll be able to see on this library because all this document because i'm a part of that group but when i will go to the user 2 you can see here i will just refresh this page here now this user should be able to see only one document spfx document they should not he or the user is not able to see the other two art documents why because we have set audience targeting for this two spfx we have not set it so that is the reason the user 2 is able to see this document so this is how we can enable audience targeting in a highlighted content web part in sharepoint online so if you want similar kind of videos subscribe to our youtube channel you will get a lot of free videos on microsoft 365 and also you can let me know in the comment if you want any particular video that i would make for yourself for you guys so you can let me know that as well so thank you and have a nice day